The true CEO of Global Investment, Keisha Daniels, exposed Rockford International's bankruptcy, validating Kim's investment. With Kim on the brink of becoming the new head of the family, the question remained, would Helen keep her word? Or was a dramatic twist in store? Harry crossed his arms. Why are you in such a hurry? Are you planning to steal the Cassidy family's inheritance? Even though Harry was talking to Stephen, he spoke these words for Helen to hear. Harry knew that she didn't want the Cassidy family to fall into the hands of outsiders. And Harry was right. As soon as Helen heard those words, she started to panic. She couldn't let an outsider leave the Cassidy family. Kim might have achieved something that Harry couldn't, but Stephen was her husband. No matter how useless Stephen was, there was a chance that Kim would hand over the family's company to that freeloader. After thinking it over, Helen came to a decision. Kim, do you have any objections to giving the 500 million to the company? Kim agreed without a second thought. She was anticipating Helen's next words. I don't mind. I'm also a part of the Cassidy family. This is something I should do. Great. As the head of the Cassidy family, I would like to formally thank you for your efforts. Starting today, we'll provide you and your family with more resources. Thank you, Grandma. And is there anything else? Of course there's more. We'll have to schedule subsequent meetings and decide how to use this money together. Everyone looked at Helen and then at Kim. It felt like Helen had completely forgotten about the bet between Kim and Harry. From the moment Kim arrived until now, Helen had been treating her like she was invisible, as if her only worth was the $500 million investment. Kim bit her lip in disappointment. No one dared to say a word. Stephen stepped forward and spoke up. Grandma, did you forget about the bet? At that time, you and everyone here were present. We were all witnesses. Helen looked at him coldly. What right do you have to meddle in our family's affairs? From the very beginning, I said the successor will be whoever is capable enough to take my place. Helen picked up her walking stick and headed to the door. Before she left, she looked back and said, I'm proud of how far the Cassidy family has come. We've achieved a lot in the past few years. The successor of the family isn't an easy decision to make. That's why, next Tuesday, I'll officially announce the successor in front of the media. One by one, the members of the Cassidy family left the conference room. Harry sneered as he watched Stephen and Kim leave. You better be prepared for next Tuesday. I'll become the successor no matter what it takes. When Kim and Stephen went home, they were greeted by Kim's mother, Natalie. Kim informed her of what happened during the meeting. Natalie's eyes widened. Did you really get an investment worth 500 million? That's right, Mom. I even want to bet against Harry. It won't be long before I become the Cassidy family's successor. Natalie had her doubts. Did that old woman agree? Grandma said she'll announce the successor at the press conference next Tuesday. Natalie gave Kim a hug. I'm so proud of you. If you become the successor, you'll be the head of the Cassidy family, and no one will ever be able to look down on you. Natalie glanced at Stephen, who hadn't said anything since he came home. Her daughter would become the head of the family soon, but her daughter's husband was as useless as ever. His mere existence brought shame to the family. Rather than a lucky charm, Stephen was more of a jinx, and Natalie wanted nothing more than to chase him away. Why are you standing around? You're just a freeloader. Make yourself useful and prepare dinner. Do you want me to starve to death? Mom, don't talk to Stephen like that. I won the bet because of... Kim trailed off when Stephen shook his head. Fine, if you don't want me to care about you, then I won't, she thought. When Kim went to the bedroom to change her clothes, Stephen went to the kitchen to prepare dinner. He'd done everything to make his wife happy. He didn't care if other people had a bad impression of him. The next day, Stephen took Kim to work for the first time on his bike. As they passed by the highest point in the city, Kim asked him to stop for a second. This was the wealthiest part of the city, and only high-class families could afford to live here. She looked at the luxurious villas while yearning in her heart. Being the head of the Cassidy family is only the first step. My goal is to live in one of those villas someday. Stephen looked back at her. Do you like it here? Of course. It's my dream to live in this neighborhood, Kim said. She glanced at her watch and tugged Stephen's shirt. 
Let's get going. I'm going to be late. Stephen looked at the villas for a second longer before turning his attention back to the road. Okay, sit tight. Ten minutes later, they arrived at the Cassidy Group. Just as Kim was about to get off the bike, a luxury car stopped next to them. A beautiful woman dressed in a classy outfit got out of the car. She was Harry's sister, Rebecca Cassidy. Hey, if it isn't Miss Kim, who managed to get a 500 million investment. How could you ride a bike to work? You're an embarrassment to the Cassidy family. Kim couldn't be bothered to argue with her. Rebecca was well known for her sly and arrogant personality. Ignore her, Stephen. I'm going inside. Rebecca was annoyed when they turned away from her. She wouldn't let them leave until she had avenged Harry. Rebecca held out her arm to block their way. Where do you think you're going? Since you're running away the moment you saw me, do you agree that you did something that you should be ashamed of? I doubt you'll ever be able to afford a luxury car like mine. Stephen pretended to be surprised and gasped. Was your car that expensive? Let me tell you something. My luxury car is worth millions. Even if you save your money for 10 years, you probably wouldn't be able to purchase a single tire. In Rebecca's eyes, Stephen was nothing but trash. She hadn't spared him a glance ever since she came. Since he'd decided to join the conversation, she would take the opportunity and humiliate him. Don't think you're all that just because you're Kim's husband. You can't even afford a car. And yet, you have the nerve to take your wife to work. How shameless can you be? Rebecca's voice was loud, and she attracted a lot of attention. While she ridiculed Stephen, the other members of the Cassidy family heard the commotion and gathered around them. A few minutes later, the crowd was stunned by an unbelievable sight further down the street. Am I hallucinating, or is that the most expensive car to exist? It's not just one. There's 20 of them. This is crazy. Is some big shot visiting the city? No, look. All of the cars are headed to our company. One after another, the luxury cars stopped in front of the entrance to the Cassidy Group. An elderly man wearing a suit stepped out of one of the cars. He went up to Stephen and greeted him respectfully. Mr. Adams, please get in the car. As the luxury cars lined up, who was this mysterious man who had just greeted Stephen? And why did he address him with such respect? Hi, I'm Stephen. Want to know my secrets? Then download the Pocket FM app and listen to the exciting episodes of Secret Succession now.